Let's go ahead and translate the circuit that we see on screen here into a multi-sim circuit simulation online. The first thing we have to do is log into our multi-sim live account. I've already done that. Here I have a previous circuit. I'm going to create a new circuit by clicking on the button there. Once I have my template open, I'm going to get my circuit schematic close by so I can refer back to it. Let's go ahead and change the name of this. In this case, we're going to call this Lana example three. Um, since this is for uh, the linear algebraic nodal analysis. And then what I'm going to do is just click and drag to form this circuit. So the first thing that I need is some sort of a power source. In my case, um, I actually need a DC current source over to the right. I'm not sure exactly where I'm going to put this. Uh, maybe in the middle of the page would be really nice. Um, and then once I have that, it looks like I'm going to need some resistors. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and space these out a little bit so that I have some room. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe it's the case that I want to scroll this up a little bit. This is really a design problem. Um, and then I'll go ahead and take resistor two. So let's take another one resistor. And in this case, oh, that's not what I want to do. Let me undo that one. Let me go back. I'm going to take a resistor. Looks like if I put about one and a half between, um, to be honest with you, let me escape this thing. I just hit escape on my keyboard. I'm going to take this down. So let's see, one, two levels, and I need some up top. Here I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if I start at, um, yeah, let me start here, and I'll drop this thing there. And then what I can do is, of course, just click and drag. So I just, oh, here, and then over and push click, and that will make the connection. Uh, let me take this resistor, and I'll put it here, and then I'll rotate it. There we go. And I want it in, uh, like directly between those since that's R2. Um, and then what I need to do is hit that and come up. Uh, so it looks like that's going to be the connection between R1 and R2. I need another resistor down a little bit. So it looks like it's going to be in the same kind of height level as the um, current source. So I just hit the little circle. I click and drag. And in this case, I'm going to make a connection between this, oh, between that part and that part, because that's exactly what I have over on this side. And then similarly, I need a connection between those two. Maybe I do something that looks like this. Um, and that will give me a connection between I1 and R3. Uh, so I need an R4 is going to be at the top of my circuit. So let's go ahead and grab a resistor. And I'll put it right up top, somewhere in the middle. Looks like it's pretty decent, doesn't it? Um, and then I'll click this one, and then just make sure these two things are connected. So let's see, we got I1, R1, R2, R3, R4, and then I need a voltage source over here. So this one's going to be a DC voltage source. Let me see if I can get that. Uh, DC voltage source is going to be here. The symbol for a DC voltage source used by multisim is a little bit different than the symbol that we're using. In our situation, um, we're using a round circle, and this one is using a um, not a round circle. Oh, so you know what? Let me delete that. I should flip it around. So in the round circle DC voltage sources, the um, top and bottom matter. So one of them is negative, one of them is positive. In this case, I have the negative lead on top, so I'm just going to flip that around and attach that thing. And then also, let me get another one in there. So um, here, this one's going to be right in the middle. And it looks like the positive is on the other side. So the positive is the one with the longer leg, and the negative is the one with the shorter leg. So let me just go ahead and attach that. Um, and then it looks like I actually have to attach this point to that one. So um, it kind of goes up this way. And then I've got uh, R5. So let's see, one, two, three three, four, and then R5 is going to be at the bottom. So I just hit another resistor right next to R3. Of course, I've got to circle it around. So now let me see if I can get, yeah, there we go. It's nice and parallel. And I hit there and then I come over there. Okay, so it looks like I'm constructing this. Now I'm going to go down to R6. R6 is a horizontal resistor that is literally like close to the bottom there. So now I connect. Um, and then R7 is going to be up here. So I'm going to push this this way, turn around, drop down a little bit. And then we'll go ahead and just make that connection. Uh, and then equally, let's uh, put this one over there. 
Um, looks like the next one would be smart to do would be the current source going downward. So here I'm going to do a DC current source. And of course, I'm going to oh flip it around so that it points the same direction. Uh, and then I have to connect the top lead of the current source to the previous leads that I had and the bottom leave lead of the current source to the bottom there, which is exactly what we see. Uh, so R7, the next one's gonna be R8. So I'm just gonna go left, top to bottom, left to right um, in that order, since that's usually how we read in English is the reason I chose that ordering. Um, okay, so let's see. Uh, let's connect this lead to that one. Uh, I've got another DC voltage source with a positive up top. So go over to the power sources positives already up top by default. So I hit that and then now um, I go this way and oh, don't need that one right now. I actually need uh, another resistor, which is gonna be my ninth resistor. Notice that if I follow the ordering suggested by this numbering, uh, Multisim will automatically order them for me, which means I don't have to like reorder it, which is really nice. Um, takes a few times to figure that out. <laughs> Uh, okay, so now we've got, let's see, R8 is done, V3, R9, I need R10, which is going to go in parallel with this uh, voltage uh, current source. So over here, and then we'll s turn it, and then we'll connect, and we'll go down here and connect. And then we've got just one more resistor over here, which was put in to highlight a, a feature of the algorithm. Kind of ridiculous from the standpoint of electrical engineering, but uh, it's worth putting in there since that's what the schematic says. And then we'll come down this way. Oh, uh, let me turn that off. I just pushed uh, right click to, to undo that. Okay, so I think the schematic on the left, let me go ahead and save this. Oh, I don't want to save it that way. Uh, I kind of forget how to do this real quick. It's not bad. I think it automatically saves actually. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. So let me just make sure that my schematic on the left is identical to the circuit on the right. So I've got I1. It's going to be 1 milliamp. So that's going to change. Uh, fact, 1 milliamp. So that's got to change. 1 kilo ohm is done. Kilo ohm, kilo ohm, kilo ohm. 5 volts. Uh, this one is actually a 2.5 volt. So this is going to be 2.5. So I literally just clicked on the value and it switched. And then we've got kiloohm. Here we've got 2.5 milliamps. So we're going to go down to the milliamp range and then change this from 1 to 2.5. And that's now what we want, right? 2.5 milliamps. Here I've got a kiloohm, kiloohm, 5 volts, kiloohm, and kiloohm. Okay, so it looks like we're pretty good here. Um, the next thing that we want to do is kind of follow the suggested guidance for the measurement that we want to do. Um, we will do the measurements for this in a different video, actually. I think this is enough just to construct this, and then we'll show how to actually set up the ground node and measure the different values in a different video since that's later on in the modeling process. Thanks so much for your attention, y'all. Enjoy.